Hello and welcome to this Judicon 2022 Lightning Talk. My name is Andrew McLeod Hunger and I have a couple of co speakers I'd like to credit Julia Dalla Riva and Connor Williams, both of whom helped a lot uh, with this project and came up with a lot of the ideas that you see presented today. Uh, it is dynamical graph predictions using SciML and Julia, more specifically using neural differential equations to make predictions on future states of dynamical graphs. Now, graphs, or sometimes networks as we call them, Usually studied as static objects, but in the real life, most graphs change over time. These are called dynamical temporal graphs. Uh, vertices and edges are added and deleted all the time. Think of a social media network. Think of um, ecological food web networks. These are dynamical graphs. For this project, we're looking at graphs whose vertex set is fixed, uh, and it is the edge set that is changing over time. And so our goal is to predict what the edges might look like at t equals n, having known what they are for t equals 1 and t equals 2 time steps. Now graphs are binary objects, uh, they're sparse, and they get complex very quickly. Um, and for that reason, they're hard to handle with classic machine learning techniques. So what we're trying to do is use the SciML, or Scientific Machine Learning Framework, to model temporal evolution of networks. This is an approach taken across different mathematical disciplines, machine learning, differential equations, graph theory, as possible thanks to use of a number of Julia packages, most notably of all um, diffyqflux.jl, which contains the SciML ecosystem. And this would have been very difficult to do in any other language other than Julia, thanks to Julia's great optimizations and the SciML framework that exists within it. Now, the first step we need to do is to create a graph embedding we use RDGP, or random dot product graphs, which take a single value decomposition or the graph's adjacency matrix. Now, this gives us a vertex, each vertex now written as a vector of dimension D. And one great thing about RDGP is the easy reconstruction back to graph format, as the probability of an edge is given by the dot product of the vertex vectors. So if I have vertices U1 and U2, and given by vectors V1 and V2, we have that the probability of the edge between u2 and u1 and u2 existing is the dot product of those two vectors. Um, if you're more interested in further reading on RDGP, I, uh, I've listed a couple of papers. There's some more if you want to know more. Um, uh, these are papers that work on uh, problems such as food web uh, ecological networks and thus make use of uh, this particular type of embedding and describe it in a bit more detail. Now, the, these are computation ste intensive steps that are required here. So uh, we make use of linearalgebra.jl having useful fast matrix algorithms available, and also the graph.jl package uh, that allows us to do all the network data wrangling we need to do. These are two, so two very highly useful packages that we use. Now, as we have um, these embedding spaces, we're tracking the movement of the vertices across them. So a discrete change in the network is modeled as an effect of the continuous displacement of the points in the metric space. And so we can do this having a dynamical system, uh, model this with a system of differential equations. Now we don't actually know what the functions themselves are, and for that, so for that reason we use neural networks to try and find what those functions might be. So uh, what is happening here? We have, at t equals 1, t equals 2, we have our graphs in vertex edge form. RDPG transforms them to points in a metric space. And now we have a series of these sort of points in the space. And this looks like a dynamical system. And we, so we set up a differential equation. We learn what these functions might be, first through SciML and through the use of neural network, and then a technique known as SINDI, which actually approximates from the data of what those actual functions might be. And so now that we have a system of differential equations, we you can use it to predict it at time t equals t plus 1. And we get a sort of uh, a point in the embedding space with time equals t plus 1. And we go backwards through RD, RDPG um, to a graph in vertex and edge format. And, and that is our prediction, that is prediction graph. Now we want to do an experiment, we could compare this predicted graph, the test graph, and see how we did, which is what we tried to do. We used a network of Wardbergs interacting over the span of six days, um, and so we used days one through five as a training set and days six as the test set. 
Um, and so we've, yeah, we've tried to get a prediction for day six, and then we compared the predicted graph to the actual graph of day six. Now, the size of the data set, 202 vertices, almost 12,000 edges across those six days. The complexity increases very quickly, and the data set is too large to handle with the simple CPU that we were using. So a couple of things we tried to do to deal with this, we reduced the size of the data set, um, picked six random vertices, and only considered the edges between those vertices, uh, which reduced the size of the graph. And then we also reduced the size of the neural network by making the assumption that the vertex might only be influenced by, say, the k closest vertices to it. And so the input for the neural network for one particular vertex would only be the distance from that vertex to the k closest to it, rather than all the vertices there. And so that reduces the size of the neural network significantly. Now these will obviously come at a cost, which is a loss of information, because we're not considering the full set of edges. But the, and the experiment itself, we consider successful in terms of proof of concept. As the code does run, the neural net OD does train successfully, and we get a prediction for that time state of t equals 6. Now, the performance itself is not good in terms of accuracy and ORC performance metrics, but this is not unexpected for the reasons that we've explained earlier, the loss of information, as well as many more optimizations being possible in terms of setup of the model, neural network training, the Cindy step of finding the actual functions themselves in that system. And it's also possible in this instance, there's actually no function defining the relationship between the vertices. Uh, it's simply possible that the birds in this observation do interact like, at random. There's nothing there to actually model. So how to fix this? Well, you we could try an experiment using synthetic data to better test this process, right? So uh, if we know that the data them itself is a network which contains, uh, is actually modeled by a dynamical function, then we can see if uh, this particular type of modeling actually is able to extract those functions, and there you would see there's potential to this theory. Um, if there is, then you could scale up the framework to try and use it on large real world, like for example, social networks to fight possible, you know, prove a possible tool to fight um, disinformation, for example. Um, perhaps you could use Julia Hub for this, is, is definitely an option. Uh, and then if you know a bit more, you can step from neural ODEs to universal differential equations. Um, these capture any pre-existing knowledge of a network dynamical system you have and use those neural networks to improve on the system even further. Uh, you improve the model even further. Then you have exploring data augmentation techniques. Um, so just uh, improving neural network optimizations. You could try and putting additional node and edge metadata, different neural network architectures, different embeddings, for example. These are all challenges uh, for people that are interested in moving this project along. Uh, and this would extend Julia modeling abilities. Um, Julia will be able to model these kind of, to do this kind of problem, uh, potentially. And so yeah, all contributions are welcome. Anyone who's interested in tackling the problem, the code is available at the following rep repository. Uh, feel free to contact me. But yeah, that is the end of the talk. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day.